Welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework Extensions tutorial series. And in this tutorial, we kind of have a look on how we use the placeholders, um, page placeholders uh, in the application customizer. So we continue by extending the Hello World uh, solution, which we created in the Hello World part one uh, tutorial by adding actual placeholders or taking reference to placeholders on the modern page and then injecting additional content on those placeholders. This uh, video has been recorded in January 2020 and it's using SharePoint Framework 1.10. Uh, if you are using a newer version of SharePoint Framework, there might be small changes here and there. And so please follow up on the documentation, um, which is always kept up to date uh, related on these things. So let's actually get right into it and let's jump back on our computer where we are, where we left off with a part one of the of the uh, Hello World uh, of the SharePoint Framework extensions. Now let's actually close up uh, that dialog and let's go back on our console if you haven't done that already. And let me actually stop the console from running. So I'm going to do a CLS uh, cleaning now. What we want to do is start modifying the actual solution. So as part of the part one, we only got the default structure and default behavior as part of the solution. But now what we're starting to do here is modifying the existing code to take advantage of associating to existing placeholders on a page. And placeholders are something which are guaranteed to exist uh, on the page. Um, so you're able to basically inject your own extensibility on those placeholders. So um, as part of the, the, the 1.10, uh, time frame we do have two different placeholders on a page so we have a header placeholder and a button placeholder um, but there are additional uh, placeholders uh, in the roadmap or in the pipeline as well but before we actually get uh, moving in here let's actually install uh, a one more package uh, so office uh, sp office ui fabric core package uh, to get some of our styling definitions uh, as uh, to be included in our solution so we're going to use these stylings uh, in our styles and, and and value settings in the solution so let's go to our console and execute uh, npm install uh, at Microsoft slash SP Office UI Fabric Core. So that's going to install the latest styles also to be available in our solution. So there we go. Now the package has been installed and let's continue by adding a new file in uh, the same structure and or same folder where we have our existing application customers. I'm going to paste in C uh, SCSS file here, which is called application customizer.module SCSS file. So SAS file, which will then contain our styling, which we're going to use in the placeholders when we're rendering content on a page. And here I'm actually copy pasting just the information from the documentation. And we can see that our top placeholder is designed to be height 60 and center aligned and a few additional settings. We are referencing background color based on a dynamic mapping of the themes, uh, which is something what the, the, S, the SP Office UI Fabric Core is actually giving us as, a, as an option. And these are quite convenient ways of actually referencing dynamically the, the theme color, which is being used on a site, rather than explicitly setting the color of the application customizer to a specific color. But then if the theme color of the site is changed, is your UX change as well. So you can, using the Office UI Fabric Core styles, so you can actually make all of that automatically adjusted. Now, let's go back on our actual application customizer and let's start modifying this one as well. So first of all, let's actually add a few more imports uh, on uh, the base import in here. So I'm going to actually add a comma there and we're going to add a placeholder content and a placeholder name uh, object uh, to be imported uh, from the base uh, components uh, to our solution. And I'm going to add uh, the style import. So let's actually add those there as well and an escape import as well. So we're going to take advantage of this in the code. And that's referencing the styles on the file which we just created. Now we're not going to actually modify too much the, the things. Well, some some settings, not a massive amount of modification though. So we are looking into um, having and modifying slightly the properties. So we're going to add a top property and a bottom property. And we're going to use these to actually inject text 
on those uh, placeholders on a page dynamically based on parameterization of the instance. And I'll show what that one means in practice as we move along uh, in the tutorial. Now, the next thing is what I want to do is that let's actually create uh, two new place internal variables in the side of our class, which are going to be used for the placeholders. Uh, so we're able to then get a reference to the placeholders if those exist on the page. And then we need to include an on init method. Uh, I'm sorry, updating the on init, init method uh, slightly. So let's actually get rid of the dialog entry and all of that. And let's modify the, the on init method uh, slightly. And let's have a look on what are we actually are doing here. So let me actually do that one over there. So we are adding this change event. Um, and basically we are saying that whenever there's our event changes or preloading of the page uh, or the navigation transitions, uh, this uh, method should be executed. So making sure that we redraw our placeholders if we are moving around between the, the, the structure and the navigation on the site. Now we also need to include our new private method, which is called the render placeholder. So let's actually get some space on that one uh, in the class and paste in the code, which we're going to use there. And let's go this through one by one so we know what's actually happening within the piece, piece of code. So render placeholders, uh, we are locking some additional information, which is good practice, obviously, so you know, especially during development time, what's actually, what pieces of code are being executed. Uh, available placeholders, uh, you can actually check what are the place, available placeholders on a page. Um, so, which is a good practice, you always want to double check is the top placeholder there, is the bottom placeholder there, and if it exists, then let's take an instance on it. Uh, what we're doing here is basically uh, we are taking an instance on the top placeholder and then by the way we're adding a on dispose uh, method there as well making sure that we're cleaning memory whenever we are moving along within the page if the top placeholder didn't exist uh, we're locking that hey for whatever reason we were unable to get it if it did exist we're actually going to modify the entry uh, of the top uh, top placeholder by injecting uh, a div inside of it with those styles which we added on our style elements. And we are actually getting a top string from the properties of top. So basically this way we can parameterize the individual instance on that particular site to actually provide us a specific text. So just to demonstrate how things actually can be done. Now let's actually test out things. Uh, so making sure that we, we actually things are working. Uh, we are still missing the on dispose. So let's actually get that one included on the, on the class as well. Uh, here we can actually see a button placeholder references as well. So that's getting there. And now I need to actually double check uh, where are we on the function. That seems to be the inside of the if that's the inside of the function so here we are adding actually the, the additional function and that should actually work out fine so saving the changes we have the on dispose available now we do need to change also the serve slightly because we modified the properties of that application customizer so what we did here just to recap we added a top and bottom properties for the placeholders, which we want to actually read and we want to actually read that content inside of them and render the text as part of the inside of those placeholders. So we're rendering the text, for example, for header in here, inside of there, and then scrolling down, we're doing the same for the bottom placeholder as well. So, and uh, rendering that text over there. And that means that we actually need to modify slightly uh, the serve.json file. So let's actually do that. Because in the serve.json, if we go in here and have a look, we are actually referencing a test message property, but not top and bottom property. So let's actually change this to be top. And uh, that one is bottom. So let's actually do that one over there. And bottom. And we can then do here, modify that based on the documentation, like top area area of the page and then you can pretty much guess what we're going to have on the bottom area of the page uh, so let's actually do that as well 
And there we go. Now we have updated the properties to match our properties in the application customers. And once again, let's go to the interface. We can see a top and bottom over there. And those are basically referenced uh, as a properties to that one. So in the cop serve, sorry, in the serve.json, we can now configure those to have default values uh, when we are debugging and verifying that everything is working properly. So let's go back on our console. Let's do again, uh, call up serve. So we test out things within the URL, which we have on the serve.json file. And as expected, we're loading things uh, based on the query parameters. So therefore, let's load the debug scripts. And there we go. Now we can actually see the top area of the page placeholder. So that's the top placeholder. And we injected some additional text on it. And you can actually see the default settings which we had in the serve.json uh, in here in serve.json with the top area of the page and the bottom area of the page, those texts. And we can actually see those in the query parameter. So if we actually go on the query parameters in here, uh, we can actually see the top area of the page text over there uh, in an encoded way. And the bottom area of the text on the on the page as well and that's basically then generating dynamically as part of the debugging experience um, the texts and the values and starting the extension to execute from the local host by default from the local host 4321 url if you're wondering where the color is coming from, that's now coming from the default theme of the page. Uh, so if we actually modify the theme of the site, it is actually getting reflected as well. So in this case, the default primary color is actually uh, brown, uh, which we can see from this edit button here. And that's why the, the, the sections are brown as well. And that was because in the styles files, we actually define that to be the theme primary. So that's how we actually control then the themes uh, by the uh, theme uh, coloring um, automatically as part of these settings as well. And that's basically it for the tutorial, uh, Hello World Part 2 tutorial. Uh, so uh, once again, we are serving the files. We use the serve.json. We use the two different properties, the top property and bottom property to actually define those settings. And now we can actually see the, the header properties over there and the bottom properties there getting injected. Maybe one thing to notice around the bottom area of the page, this is, uh, so to say, um, let's say sticky uh, footer, which means that it actually stays on top of the page. Uh, there is a separate, uh, the, the footer options are in plans as well to come, which are more on the content of the page. So, but by default, uh, the bottom placeholder is actually sticky and it will be always visible on top of the page, so to say. But that's it for the part two. And, and in part three, we start actually packaging this code and then deploying that uh, to our tenant and test out that everything is working properly without local host uh, running. Mm -hmm.